Today, I explain exactly how the RSI indicator works and why. I also cover how RSI can identify overbought and oversold conditions to help inform trading decisions. Back after this brief message. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. As a trader, you'll benefit from cost-effective market access via multiple trading platforms and APIs. These enable trading and investing in any US stock, over 60 of the most liquid futures contracts, FX and CFDs. You can even diversify your portfolio by buying and selling other traders' strategies as investable assets themselves. So, if all of that sounds interesting, Learn more by clicking on the link top right now or find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. RSI is what's known as a momentum oscillator. It's a great indicator for helping us understand when the price action of an asset is either overbought or oversold. This can then feed into the evaluation process to help inform trading decisions. Let's get started. This episode is part of a wider series known as Spotlight on Indicators. If you want to look at any of the other episodes, you can find a link in the description. Now, the purpose of starting off with the Relative Strength Index is because we're actually looking at a piece of analysis that will compare the standard RSI with another indicator called the Stochastic RSI. And the image on the right here explains the methodology that I will be taking. And the very first stage of this is to thoroughly understand each of those indicators by performing some initial research. I believe you thoroughly have to understand the messages that indicators give out in order to use them effectively. And so this episode is going to focus on that standard version of RSI. But ultimately, in future episodes, we will hopefully have a direct comparison between the effectiveness of these two indicators. Now, RSI is probably one of the most used and discussed indicators there are. And this is what's known as a momentum oscillator. And that's because it measures both the velocity and the magnitude of price movements. And conveniently for algo traders, this is normalized to a range of between 0 and 100, and typically higher values, either a level of 70 or above or 80 and above, are what are classified as overbought, and then either below levels of maybe 30 or 20 is what's classified as oversold. Now the reason it's convenient for algo traders when we have a range bound like this is that it doesn't matter which assets we're trading or which time frames we're trading in, the indicator will always range between those same values. And that's not the case for all indicators. So this helps to keep code consistent regardless of what we're trading. Let's now take a look at the RSI calculation. And a good understanding of this will allow us to apply the indicator in a more sensible way. The first stage is to calculate what's called the relative strength. Now, don't confuse this with the relative strength index. The two have different values. And we won't get to the calculation of the RSI until step two. And when it comes to the calculation of the relative strength, I just wanted to issue a warning because I've seen lots of websites that incorrectly show how this should be calculated. So I've seen that the relative strength is the average of the up bars divided by the average of the down bars. This is not the case. This suggests, as an example, if we're using 14 periods for RSI, that if there are six up bars, we divide the total upwards move by six. And that would leave eight down bars. And again, we would divide the total down move by eight. That is not correct. The correct formula is this. For an RSI using 14 periods, we should divide the sum of the up bars by 14 and likewise for the down bars. And then the relative strength is simply the ratio of those two values. Now, you might also notice that these two denominators of 14 would actually cancel each other out. 
And so we can get this relative strength simply by taking the sum of the up bars and dividing by the sum of the down bars. But I've just got them in here to make the point it's not the average of the individual up bars and down bars. But straight away here, we can see that in terms of relative strength, we're going to have a value greater than one if the sum of the up bars is more than the sum of the down bars. So in other words, the price is going up in this period and it will be a value of somewhere between zero and one if the sum of the down bars is greater. And this relative strength then feeds into the second step as shown here. So let's just plug some numbers in now to fully understand how the RSI value is eventually computed. Let's start off by looking at an example where the sum of the up bars is exactly equal to the sum of the down bars. So I've just, as an example, used five here. This means that our relative strength will have a value of exactly one. And so plugging that in, we have 100 divided by two, which is 50, and then 100 minus 50 gives us an RSI of 50, which of course is right in the middle of that zero to 100 range, which is what we'd expect. Now let's look at an example that would apply if we were in a strong uptrend. So here, the sum of the up values is 10, and the sum of the down values is just one. So this gives us a relative strength of 10. So here, in the fraction, we have 100 over 11, and then that value gets subtracted from 100, which leaves us with an RSI value of just over 90. So in other words, very close to that upper limit of 100. And because there's been so much upwards movement compared to that downwards movement, that of course makes absolute sense. And now if we reverse that and have the sum of the down bars being 10 and the sum of the up being one, the relative strength now, of course, is 0.1. And plugging that into the equation gives us an RSI value of 9.1, very much in the oversold region. So hopefully you can see here that it's the momentum combined with the direction, whether that's up or down, during the number of periods of the calculation that effectively gives us this momentum value. Now, of course, price rarely just travels in one direction. And instead, it is very often cyclic in nature. And we see this behavior even in strong trends where we have pullbacks throughout the trend. And it's this cyclic behavior that causes the relative strength index to fluctuate between overbought and oversold. Let's now look at some real examples on a chart. We have RSI using 14 periods at the bottom here, shown in blue. And this is the first point that the RSI value enters that overbought region that I've defined in this case as 70. And if we take a look at where the price was at this point, it's at the top of this swing. And so all of those previous 14 bars have contributed to the sum of the up bars being much higher than the sum of the down bars, giving us this overbought reading. Now, typically, when values become overbought, we can often expect to see a reversal in the price direction. And in this case, that's exactly what we do see. We have another overbought example here. And once again, we find ourselves at the top of a small upswing. And following this, the price begins to fall. And similarly here. Now let's look at some oversold examples. So here the RSI just about reaches the oversold region determined by the level of 30. And we can see that this coincides with the bottom of this downswing. And just like when values were overbought, we might expect to see a reversal. The same but opposite is the case here. And so now because values have become oversold, we might expect the prices to now start to increase, which we see happens in this case. Then we have the same here. Now, these points here are very interesting because at this point, the RSI enters the oversold region twice. And although we saw a minor reversal in the price after the first one of these, price did then continue down further. 
and the RSI entered this oversold region for a second time. And this is a good example of what's called an RSI divergence. But this deserves an episode in its own right. And so this is what I'm going to cover next time. In the episode that follows this, I'll start to get into the detail of this new indicator, the stochastic RSI. I'll be looking at how that's different and also how it addresses some of the issues of the standard RSI indicator. And after that, we're going to start looking at the potential trading strategies that we'll use as part of the analysis we're going to perform to compare RSI to the stochastic RSI. That's it for this episode, but before you go, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to the channel. And by making sure you also click on the notification bell will mean that you get notified when new episodes from DarwinX are released. Now, until next time, trade safe.